Okay, welcome period four. I'm sure while you're watching this, I am on the quest to get 25 cent runs in. What do I mean about that? Well, last year, my buddy and I went skiing and they had Men's Day. Hey, President's Day in Michigan. Here at Timber Ridge, it's Men's Day. So they give you half price. So if you ski, 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 you actually, we found out that we could ski for 25 cents per run. Okay, we had to get a lot of runs in. We didn't have a lot of lunch, but we got our money's worth. So, what are you doing today? Your job today is I've given you each your own individual sheet. You are to work in groups. So what that means is you can discuss how you want to do it and then you could divvy up a little work. You could then come up with an answer and then I want everybody to have a group output sheet which means on one of the sheets you write your answer. You sign your names. It is a homework type work thing. It is to be done by the time you leave the classroom. So here is your job find the bowling pins volume. So you say, well, how do I do it? Well, I've left you a bowling pin to look at. So I could look at this maybe and say, hmm, I could get the cheese slicer or I could find the knives, the ninja knives that the Ninja Turtles would use. And what would I do? Okay, I would come over here and I'd say, let's see, let's see, from here to here. What do I know? I know that this dimension here is from the bottom going up. This is 7.25 inches from the bottom. And then I know this one is 5.875 inches from the bottom. So, hmm, 8.75 is 7 eighths. That's a quarter. So this number minus this number is one and three-eighths inches okay or 1.375 inches so then we ask well our print shows us that this diameter right over here is 3.0 3.703 diameter it's in inches Put inches mark and then this one here is 4.563 4.563 inches diameter so we say okay what could we do to estimate that hmm what could we do well I think I think maybe that's part of a frustum okay well what the heck is the equation for a frustum I don't know what is a frustum them. Didn't we have it in one of our problems a while back? Isn't that something that looks like this? It's got a bottom base and then it's part of a cone. It would like come together, but no, we chop it off here and here is the top of it. And isn't that a frustum? That could be part of a frustum. And what is this? This is R. And R here is what? 3.703 over 2 and this is called this little r let's call this one big r and big r would be 4.563 inches over 2 okay so let's put some equal signs here so what could we do we could say well wait a second hmm this is an area this is an area what if I found the middle area and what would be the middle area could we just take big R plus little r divide by 2 and find the middle question mark and if we did that hmm what could we estimate this well we could estimate this as a cylinder couldn't I I could say this is a cylinder let's sketch that cylinder a little more so there is our average size of our cylinder it would be a little bigger on the top and it would be what a little smaller on the bottom 
But what would that? That cylinder might be a way to estimate the volume of that part, okay, that part of the frustum or the bowling pin. Okay, so hmm, that's an idea. But what's right about this? Or what's wrong with it? And what's right with it? Does this seem logical? Can we do that? Okay, so I'm going to be quiet now. And I'm going to say I'm going to leave it up to you. You decide if you want to do this or whatever way you think you're going to do it. But in the end, I want to find out who has the volume that is closest to the volume that I figured out. Now that doesn't mean my volume is correct because I really know that if we wanted to find the volume of this thing I would just dunk it in some water and I would do a volumetric displacement measurement. That would be simple. I'd be done with that, over with it, and I'd have the pretty much almost exact answer. Now, I'm going to leave you with one thing. You see this little drilled out thing at the bottom? Do not worry about that all. Okay? Forget about it. Okay? And it isn't it nice right there at the top. Okay, let's see. Where's the top at? Right here. Right at the top. Okay? They show you that the top is part of a sphere. So, I know you guys all know the formulas for a sphere. And if you don't, well, that needs to go on your list. So, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you get to work because you now have, since I've taken up about seven or eight minutes of your time, since you have 52 minutes minus eight minutes of me talking to you with this problem, you now have, let's see if I could do the math, eight from, let's see, borrow one. Okay, that's a four and four. So, you have about 40 some minutes to solve this problem. And if you're real nice, then you don't have anything more to do. You can sit there and then what? Practice your unit circle. Okay, because a problem I might give you next week week might be, hmm, what is the inverse sine of hmm, what ratio? One half. And you're gonna say what? Pi over six. But that would be too easy. You're saying, Mr. Huss, why are you doing this? We need to get to work. Okay, you're right. No more stories, no more work. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.